Hi, this is Brandon Cross with Node. And today, let's talk about what happens when the cloud fails. So we're actually right now, as I'm shooting this video, in the middle of an event that <clears throat> started yesterday with a major cloud service provider. Here we were using our cloud services systems yesterday. Life is great. We're going through doing our normal thing. Suddenly, out of the blue, one of our systems goes down. Okay, what's, what's the scoop? Some other people start having some issues. All right, well, there's, there must be a problem with this cloud-based service. And what this cloud-based service was? Nothing less than Skype itself. Skype, a major instant messenger in the whole world, used by millions and millions and millions of people completely down for 24 hours. So this really eh, unprecedented. So what happened? Well, the way that this network actually operates is not unlike many new cloud-based services that are distributed. Um, the Skype essentially cre has a network of users and there's millions and millions, millions of users <clears throat> and these users all kind of get interconnected in a big vast web of usage and sharing uh, distributing of kind of a computer cluster power of resources is and, and this is actually something that they've explained uh, in their post that they actually put out recently they said look some of these, you know, our network is, is built around a series of nodes that are the end users, actual computers. But some of these nodes aren't normal nodes. Some are very special nodes called super nodes. Now, super nodes, really interesting. They hold the master um, records, a database full of records that contain all of the different links between their network. Well, what happened yesterday is the main Skype server sent out an update, a patch that was sent out from Skype to its super nodes. But in this patch was some bug. Now, the bug, when it hit the super nodes, caused the whole network to shut down. Everything pretty much went offline. The only way that Skype even knew that their network had failed was because they monitored how many Skype users were using the system and they started watching the number fall through the floor. And as the engineers at Skype watched the number tick down by the millions of users fall, I'm sure somebody got a knot in their gut and said, what's going on? Well, Skype released a Twitter update about you know, several hours later. Said, hey, we're having some issues. Um, we're looking into them. They released a major update on their website yesterday, and they said, hey, we're having some issues. We're still working on them. Now, in the meantime, millions of users around the world are without this service. Here we have a company, a major cloud provider. Now, they're right in the middle of a major IPO. Cisco just made a multi-billion dollar bid on this company. And they're only source of revenue really is from people who use their service to call out which represents about five percent of their subscribers and so you have a fantastic service one of the best services on the internet i know my company uses it heavily and suddenly it's down it's gone it's as if it didn't ever even exist. Nobody could log in. Well, yesterday when I started experiencing these issues, I said, well, what is going on with this service? 
I Google it. Comes up with a Twitter feed. Shows me all the Twitter messages of people posting. Hey, I'm having problems. I'm having problems. I'm having problems. I see a guy in the Dominican Republic having a problem. A guy in India having a problem. A lady in, in Africa having the problem. A guy in France. People in the U.S. It's all over the world. Widespread failure because of a patch that came from a provider that was distributed to the cloud-based network. Now a distributed network like that isn't supposed to really be prone to failures. It's not really prone to denial of service attacks. It's not prone to, in, to single points of failures. It's distributed. There's another technology that's similar to it that reminds me of how what Skype described yesterday, BitTorrent. It's a way of multiple computers in an area all sharing a file and s spreading little chunks of the file back and forth between each other to make the efficiency of moving that giant chunk of data around so much better because you don't have bottlenecks. You have distributed networks that have no bottlenecks. It's like having a wide open throttle for stuff all the time. As open as possible, it's very efficient. So what happens when these services fail and how do you respond? It's very important, the lessons that we take out of the event that's going on right now and, and happened started yesterday, to have a way of backing up your cloud-based service providers. Now what's interesting is that Node, and, and my, my company, has recognized this since the day that I founded it and it has been a very important component of what Node provides to be able to say, how can we break off the, um, the all of this connectivity that we put ourselves into with this one provider? How do we break apart from that if that provider goes down? How do we survive a cloud failure? The thought that I've always had is, man, you put all your servers in Amazon's EC2 cluster, the big cluster over there. What happens if the FBI walks in there and walks out with a bunch of their servers? What happens? I mean, is it going to happen? Can it happen? You know, frankly, Amazon can't control that. The government can walk into anybody's company and take out their computers anytime. If they walk into a big data center and, and they say, well, one of these computers in this giant data center might have what we're looking for. They'll take everything. And, um, you know, that could bring down a huge amount of businesses. <clears throat> so how do you back up? How do you have other carriers that you can distribute your systems across? Those are questions I can help you answer. You need to contact Node, and I'll talk to you about it. Well, anyway, I'm Brandon Cross. Give me a ring. I'll catch you later.